Bangalore is a fascinating market. Um, it's one market where there has been a steady demand uh, from end users. There has been a steady investment activity. And even when the rest of the market Bangalore held its own uh, much longer than uh, Let's talk about the uh, reward. Then I look at uh, buying into the market. Which are the locations that you think are the best? And how does a uh, buyer normally selects uh, one is in terms of uh, the micro markets have been shifting uh, in the last uh, 10 years if you look at it uh, 10 years back uh, cbd was uh, required or uh, maybe around 14 15 years back cbd is one of the most uh, preferred areas then the micro market did shift to Kormagla and places like indra nagar and now uh, what's happened in the last 15 years is uh, northeast and southeast of bangalore initially southeast and now even northeast of bangalore uh, have come into the picture in terms of being the emerging uh, micro markets. Uh, largely, the reason being uh, most of the IT companies are uh, Bangalore. First of all, is IT driven largely in terms of states. And most of the IT companies are in the segment uh, of the of the city. Hence, uh, this being a popular catchment, most of the micro markets have developed in these areas, and they have seen reasonable appreciation in the last uh, uh, eight to ten years. I wouldn't say the last three years it's been a little stable, but uh, years before that, there's been a lot of appreciation that people have seen. So uh, these markets still continue to be good markets because of the ready catchment available. And these areas would be something like Whitefield. Uh, Whitefield is one such as outer indoor has still continued to be a good market. Absorptions have been pretty good there. Banargata Road, uh, places like Hendo Road are emerging currently. Uh, North Bangalore, also North Bangalore, Hebron, Yalanka have been good locations and where you can still see a decent amount of appreciation in the coming years. Uh, is, so I would consider these areas as good areas to invest. And Northeast and Southeast of Bangalore have been the popular areas in uh, Bangalore to invest. Now, North Bangalore actually. Please continue. Sorry, uh, apart from this, uh, Tumku Road is, uh, and also metro connectivity has uh, slowly. Uh, uh, help certain areas to emerge as uh, good markets. So Tumko Road has slowly come into the picture. In the last uh, year or so, we've seen a few new projects taking off uh, in these areas. Uh, so, uh, when you look at uh, the areas that are growing, like you said, that IT uh, drove uh, white fields, Arjapur Road, uh, and so on, and now uh, North Bangalore actually grew on the back of the airport, right? The new airport. Correct. There has been there has been some amount of uh, problems with infrastructure and so on. Do you think that has uh, fixed itself? In so, North Bangalore, in terms of infra, I think hasn't really had uh, a connectivity issue because North Bangalore is pretty well connected. Your uh, uh, high-speed road to the airport has ensured that uh, if anybody living in that side of town can reach that side of town uh, in a very decent amount of speed. So, if you're in the center of the city and if you're driving towards Jalanka. 20 minutes is a good time to reach uh, Yalanka, which is uh, which is really good considering where we are today. Uh, the other uh, areas in North Bangalore and the surrounding areas are places like Jakur. The, the connectivity between Jakur, a place like Jakur and a place like uh, Hennu Road uh, has also improved in the last uh, couple of years. And these two roads uh, have played a very significant role in the last uh, few years in terms of uh, real estate. When I say two roads, it's the North Bangalore Road and the Hennu Road. Via Tani Sandra. So these areas are now the new areas which uh, are uh, which are uh, uh, in terms of appreciating uh, mainly because of connectivity to the city. It's closer. Uh, it is also a developing micro market. Prices are pretty reasonable to pick up, and we definitely see some scope of appreciation in these areas. So I think uh, North Bangalore till Jakur is still a great bet to invest. Up to Yalanka, I would say, is still a great bet to invest. And the peripheral areas around that, like uh, Tani Sandra, Hendo Road, uh, are also at Sarkar Nagar, and these areas are good areas where you can still see appreciation. Who's buying today? Is it the end user or the investor or both? So uh, I think uh, the end user uh, is the larger segment. So for us, it's been almost, uh, I would say, almost 90 to 90 percent to 95 percent of the buyers are all end users. Uh, people are not willing to. So the, when we say investors earlier, there were two kinds of people. One who would invest and go right through till the end of the project and then look at selling the project. The others were speculators who would want to put in money, wait with the project for uh, for at least six to eight months, 
see if there's a decent amount of appreciation and then exit from the product. Uh, those kind of people uh, very rarely exist today because uh, it is uh, the speculator market is not uh, it's not lucrative at all anymore. Uh, product appreciation now we've seen has uh, taken place for projects which are towards the end when delivery happens. So these are the kind of projects which are really appreciating. But during the course of construction, uh, the appreciation has been at least on the year on year conservatively anywhere between eight, seven to eight percent. In some cases, ten to twelve percent. So, uh, so most of the projects are end user driven, and Bangalore uh, is always been largely uh, an end user driven market because of the IT segment. So, for us, at least 80 to 85 percent of our buyers are IT IT oriented people, IT or ITAs or financial service people, and they're all end users. Um, do you see uh, uh, that most buyers today are hesitant to buy projects that are closer to completion? Yeah, so there are two uh, reasons because of that. One is yes, uh, so reputed developers, people have the trust uh, to invest with them because they know that the developer is going to complete the project in handover. But uh, also there would be two outflows uh, for a for a, a customer. One is his uh, EMI outflow and then the rental outflow. So it makes more sense for them to pick up a ready uh, to move property. Second is uh, proof of the pudding is then eating the pudding. So the project is ready up and there. You can you know for sure that in the next five or six months you could move or you could move into the product immediately. So there are a lot of takers for uh, ready to move in projects and our inventory overhang also has been pretty huge in the city. Uh, so there are a lot of projects which are at uh, good stages of construction, 70, 75 percent, 80 percent completed. So and if you look, it's it's obvious that the launches also have not been very great. Not only because of the inventory overhang, but also because of uh, the RERA coming into picture. People are just waiting to see how it pans out. So last three months to six months have not been uh, large number of launches. Hence, uh, making it popular for projects which are nearly completion to be picked up. Uh, tell us about your own projects. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about your projects, the kind of uh, categories you're in, and the stages of completion of your projects. So, um, uh, assets have uh, projects uh, ranging from around 35 lakhs, which are the studio type of apartments, uh, which go up till around uh, 6 to 7 crores, uh, which are the super premium apartments. Uh, projects are basically, in terms of pricing, are mainly, mainly because of the size and the location of the project. So, uh, but largely our focus has been uh, in the segment, which has been between the 80 to 1.5 crores to 2 crores uh, segment, because that's where most of the projects are being acquired. Uh, a good uh, a row house, for example, a row house project uh, of around a couple of crores, which is uh, which is a good price today, uh, of around two and a half thousand square feet, and uh, maybe a, an apartment anywhere between uh, 60 to 60 lakhs to a crore uh, for a two bedroom or a, a crore for a three bedroom is, is the very is the sweet spot today where most people and most projects have been uh, uh, most pro people are picking up units. So we have projects uh, at various stages of construction. So uh, we have a project called Huron now, which is near uh, Maneta Tech Park. Uh, we had a very good launch. We sold almost uh, 40, uh, 45 percent of the project has been sold uh, because of the Maneta Tech Park catchment. A lot of people have picked up here, and the price also was of a decent price of around 4,800 rupees per square foot, considering the location. If you look at Hebal, which is close by, uh, for a premium project, it's anywhere between 9,000 to 10,000 rupees per square foot. Uh, so the specs are different. So hence, uh, uh, hence uh, this has been a very popular project where we sold 45% of the project. The other good project uh, which has been well received is a project called 63 Degree East, which is off Sajapur Road. Uh, it's uh, right in between Electronic City and the Sajapur uh, Outer Indoor Hub. So uh, and it is also not very far away from Whitefield if you take the uh, road connecting Varto. Hence, uh, this project also has been a good project, which uh, we do at least 15 to 20 units month on month. Uh, so that's that's another popular project. The price range of this project is also anywhere between uh, uh, anywhere between uh, 40 lakhs for a for a one bedroom, going up to around 70 lakhs for a three bedroom. I'm talking about an all-inclusive price. Uh, so so most of our projects today are that range. Then we have another project which. Uh, is a mixed development, a plotted development, which will have a villa on it. We have the option to pick up a plot or a villa. This is called this is called 18 and Oak, which is on Sajapur Road, which has a golf course also, an operational golf course. Uh, so that's another project of ours. And then we have few projects coming up in the next uh, 
in this quarter we, we would have at least three launches coming up one in the city uh, one on north bangalore one on henu road uh, two rohos projects and one uh, one villa one apartment uh, super premium apartment project uh, which is near indranagar so this is what we have planned for this year other than that we uh, we have another project on mark uh, we don't have much inventory we are waiting for next tower to be launched uh, east point was another project and lumos was another project which we handed over and uh, people have moved into these projects uh, apart from this we plan to have launches in the coming uh, months uh, so this financial year at least we would see three projects uh, being launched from the assets, how has uh, era impacted you how has sorry, era impacted yeah, Rara, I think, has, uh, has uh, impacted uh, most developers. It's been more like a wait and watch game. The whole process of Rara to, reg uh, to register a project, it's a bit take time, and then uh, the one month period to wait, uh, post acknowledgement number to wait for the Rara number. Uh, so, uh, one is we were all developers, including us, were gearing up to have our existing projects being registered. Uh, there was a lot of time spent with consultants to understand RERA, the implications of RERA, uh, to make sure we are logging in the right documents with regard to RERA. So, so the last three months has been dull, dull with regard to GST and RERA because there is a lot of changes. Uh, getting a back-end uh, organized to ensure that uh, you are ready to function with regard to RERA or GST. So a lot of time has not uh, consumed in... So many things change, like your agreement changes, your agreement with... Uh, broker changes, the channel partner changes, channel partner registration. So overall business has been dull for the last three months, but I'm sure with the most developers now registering all their projects with Rera and people gearing up to register new projects, some have already started registering their new launches with Rera. Uh, it's going to be an interesting quarter to see. Uh, the next three months are really going to be interesting. And I think many developers have planned a lot of launches in the coming months. Have you registered all your projects with Rera? We have registered all our projects with Rera. We have, and uh, we are in the process of registering new projects also with Rera. On the new launches, where the approvals have come through and uh, we've logged in the files. Um, Bangalore is a city which has been plagued by infrastructure problems, right? In terms of traffic infrastructure, in terms of public transport, metro is about taking off and very slowly. So, uh, how do you see the infrastructure growth in the city and uh, will that impact the uh, buying, you know, buying in critical looking? So uh, like any city in Bangalore, uh, in India, uh, we are a country which is largely dependent on road infrastructure and, uh, uh, and road infrastructure. Apparently metro has played an important role in many of the cities also. So similarly metro has been well received in Bangalore. Uh, you see a lot of people traveling from various parts of the city using the metro network, uh, connecting themselves to work. The next phases of metro also, there is basic, we see a lot of uh, uh, work being done to ensure the next five phases of metro come up. So that's a very positive sign when it comes to connectivity. So I think, uh, uh, in fact, there has been pressure also to in increase the number of lines of the metro uh, rail to ensure that there are more, more, there's more frequency in terms of uh, uh, the, the metro. So that's a positive sign. So uh, somewhere I've seen in the city uh, in the last year or so, it has got decongested to some extent. I won't say to a large extent, but uh, we have noticed it has got decongested to some extent. So I think this metro will have a big role to play in terms of people uh, not bo not bothering where they work as long as they are able to be connected by metro. So today we see a lot of people, uh, for example, we see a lot of people from uh, Central Bangalore, North Bangalore going towards Whitefield. They use the Cantonment station and they take the train and go towards Whitefield. Towards Whitefield. So uh, there are a lot of people who go from the city, go towards Yashanpur. So these areas have, uh, people have been made, making use of the rail. But now I see a lot of people using making use of the net, metro is one. Second, uh, your nice road. So earlier we had the outer ring road, which now has already become like an inner ring road of the city. Uh, but all the development did take place uh, in and around the uh, locations near the uh, outer ring road. And this, now we have a nice corridor, which is uh, the road beyond the outer ring road. We see that gap being bridged now, where most of the projects have started. In fact, people have started uh, uh, having new launches uh, 
the moment the nice road had come up and all that gap has been bridged so you see kanakpura road has become a very important hub uh, uh, banangata road uh, was an important area but now with the connectivity people are happy to travel to ect and uh, other places where their jobs are so uh, the metro development has been slow uh, but uh, in terms of uh, uh, it has been uh, people are making use of the uh, infrastructure but i think the speed of the development has to increase so that people will make more use of these uh, these kind of infrastructure developments who is buying today what is the profile of the buyer what is that age group that is uh, most active uh, so if i could speak for us as in a sense uh, most of our projects which we have launched recently are in the budget range like i did mention uh, between um, uh, 40 lakhs to around uh, 75 lakhs uh, which are uh, one one two and three bedroom right? that's the range and most of our projects are uh, are near the uh, for example the project near hebal is near manya tech park the other project 63 east is next to uh, next to electronic city and uh, sajapur outer ring road so the segment has been anywhere between 26 years to 45 years that's the age group and uh, it's been it largely and it's been end user driven last year so that's that's where it is uh, so that's 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 the segment which will be not uh, constitute a big part of your uh, buyer segment so nri is do uh, but uh, when i say nri is it's largely southeast uh, asia uh, to be more specific uh, it is like singapore indonesia or uh, middle east uh, which is more of uh, dubai bahrain kuwait uh, so, uh, so these these are the areas Uh, the customer from US contribute to a percentage, but not as significant as as the Southeast Asia and uh, the Middle East. Uh, let's talk about luxury housing. What, in your view, suits luxury housing, and uh, what uh, makes it luxury? Is it the location? Is it the size? Is it the amenities or the specifications? All of that. So, uh, in fact, uh, real estate, like uh, anybody would say, it's about location, location, location. So, real, the, the critical factor is location. Uh, in, uh, the surroundings of the location are critical. Uh, you wouldn't want a uh, very uh, uh, not upmarket area, uh, and then develop a very luxurious project in the area. The structure of the project will not suit the location. So, it is also it's a mix, uh, but uh, location plays a very important role. uh the size okay, so it is if you are in the city the apartment sizes are smaller because the cost of the apartment is higher if you are making bigger projects in the city obviously the price of the project is expensive so there is a segment for that so as people move a little are willing to move a little away from the city the size of the unit is very critical because people expect to have luxury homes where uh, they are very spacious uh, specs play an important role people are very well traveled Uh, but uh, the specs is a choice. It's very personal in terms of taste. What I would like is what something what you wouldn't like. But people have a fixed thing saying that okay, granite is premium, marble is more premium, imported tiles are premium. So uh, so uh, specs plays an important role. But lastly, it's about location and the size of the unit is one. Second, people today are uh, very conscious about uh, uh, green. So if there are good green initiatives in the project. uh and uh, also if if there uh, for for example people are if you are away from the city uh, like row houses and villas play an important role because there's a lot of greenery attached to your home uh, this is what something would look, look some something what people would look for but it again is a very fine balance about uh, location size and the price of the unit so that's the major balance which people will look for and uh, if you uh, look at any one location say in near white field Uh, a large number of people would be, uh, you know, the people who are working there who buy, say, thirty-five uh, lakh to about eighty-five, uh, ninety lakh uh, housing. But in the same location, who are the buyers of your luxury property? So uh, when when I say IT, there are different tiers in terms of IT uh, as well. So, for example, uh, for someone who is being living in a rented house, just starting his career. Uh, husband and wife have just uh, worked for a few years with a household income of uh, one lakh, which is around fifty thousand, fifty thousand each. By fifty percent of your salary goes into EMIs. You're uh, you're paying for a house which is around uh, anywhere close to fifty, fifty five lakhs. I'm just saying using a thumb rule mechanism of thousand rupees per lakh EMI. So that's that's the household income. 
so uh, a pg of uh, anywhere between 45 to around 40 or 40 years to around 50 years uh, the household income is as good as uh, anywhere between 6 to 8 lakhs minimum if you are a very senior person in the it uh, space so for an 8 lakh household income you are able to afford a uh, four you will be able to afford a four crore loan so the project luxury projects if anywhere between two and a half to three crores are the ones which are doing well that people are willing to pick up and uh, and this TG is a good 15-20% uh, at least. So these are the people who are really picking up homes. Apart from that, you do have NRAs. Uh, you do have people who are uh, graduating from their first home and getting into the second home. Then if they have made some decent appreciation when they bought their first home because of the price. And now they're able to sell it at a very decent rate. So they're able to put that money into it. Uh, so that's that's, uh, that's that's the TG which, which, which is uh, looking at these luxury projects. In a slowing market, the upgrade market seems to be, uh, in most cities, it seems to be a little slow. People are waiting to sell. There are more sellers who want to sell and then upgrade to a newer, larger house. Do you find the same thing in Bangalore? So, yeah, definitely. So, with uh, so much, uh, with the inventory overhang, like I did mention earlier, uh, inventory overhang is anywhere between 75 to 85,000 units. Uh, so, when you have inventory uh, overhang, Yes, people uh, are finding it difficult. But uh, if, if you also notice, there's another trend where this inventory which is available would not be the great inventory which is available in terms of stock. Uh, in some, some, some cases, they are residual inventory which is available. In some cases, it is inventory which uh, cannot be of a great developer. So suppose I uh, invest, if I had invested in a project around 10 years back, where the developer is a, of a good uh, caliber, a graded developer. We know for sure the quality of the structure, the building and the specs used are superior. And also the location has been good, where there has been a decent amount of appreciation. But there are some good add-ons. Suppose I have a small terrace area, which is where somebody wants lung space. Or I have a small backyard, which is a green area. Or I have a penthouse, for example, which is not a very huge penthouse. Uh, or I have a premium location unit. Uh, there are definitely buyers who would like to pick up these units rather than going for a new unit. So there is a percentage of resales which definitely do happen in the city. And uh, like any city, yes, uh, the overall trend may not be great in terms of people uh, picking up homes, but resales do happen and these are the homes which get picked up faster than the inventory which is available. Um, do you offer discounts, uh, schemes and so on? Bring, uh, in a weaker market? So, uh, so discounts has become a, a trend of the day. So I think all developers are uh, are uh, offering discounts whether you like it or not. So and the customer also uh, expects a hard bargain. So customers also do expect some price negotiation to the to come on the table. Uh, so they are also under pressure in terms of to sell off the inventory. So there would be some uh, negotiation which happens, uh, which is viable for the customer, viable for the developer as well. Second, yes, there are a lot of things available to make it um, attractive for the uh, for the customer. So there are schemes like your no your no pre EMI scheme, or there would be a, there would be a deferred payment schedule given to customers. Or to ensure that there is a there is a unit which happens a sale which happens and there is also a cash flow which is not affected uh, so there is a deferred payment schedule there are also freebies like kitchens and uh, furniture which are provided so that it becomes part of your whole uh, whole uh, sale option somebody buying a unit gets it with all the furniture and the kitchen furniture furniture and wardrobes and kitchen so yes. Um, I think that's that's been uh, part of the market uh, marketing strategy. Well, it's been part of the marketing strategy by most companies. So uh, we also do offer things like that, uh, and it's been well received by most customers. You know, 2017 was probably the year of the most attractive changes and the largest number of policy changes. If you look at any one calendar year, I think it was the largest number of changes that happened. Uh, we are in a new year for 2009. Tell us how you were impacted by 2018 or 17 or by the series of policy changes and what do you expect in 2018? So, uh, yeah, I think uh, the only thing is everybody waiting for the budget which uh, is scheduled to come in February, yes. 
GST did impact. There has been an increase in the overall cost of the unit. Uh, capital markets uh, have uh, been uh, been stable uh, because of the ample supply uh, of your pipeline. So that's how it is. But uh, the good things to be seen is uh, there have been demands in specific areas, specific micro markets, uh, where uh, people are. Uh, I mean, people. See, end of the day, people need to also invest money, and people need to buy homes. So it's not that everybody has stopped buying homes. So people have been buying homes. They've been a little more picky, a little more careful, and the whole buying uh, process, at least the lead time of uh, a sale, is uh, what would be, for example, 20 days earlier has gone to around 45 days. Uh, people are shopping in the market in terms of going and picking out uh, most developers. So these are this is one trend uh, on one side. But uh, apart from that, uh, there has been a demand. It's not that people have not bought them. So there has been a demand. But only thing, how do you ensure that uh, the demand uh, there is a there is a far leap or there is a far jump in terms of uh, people wanting to pick up homes? How do you create that kind of scenario? So there are there are policy changes. Yes, GST reduction can motivate people to buy. Uh, reduction in registration costs and creating a uniformity in all cities registration costs is something which people can think about so that there's a demand create for uh, homes. Uh, so that, that's one thing to decreasing the interest rate, which they have, they have been doing. But something very motivating can really, uh, really help uh, developers to uh, sell more units. Uh, the income tax slab, for example, uh, if you can, uh, if you, the slab structure, if it changes, you will you find having more people able to afford homes uh, if if you have the slab structure change. So these are things uh, which are all in discussion. But end of the day, it's a call which uh, the government needs to take. They need to realize that this is one of the biggest industries uh, which has em which has employed a lot of number of people. Employment is huge in this industry. India's GDP also has been dependent on this industry. So that's that's a realization which needs to set in uh, and at least stabilize the whole process uh, and ensure the next three years is a very stable uh, scenario for the real estate industry. And uh, you think that this year uh, in the budget, the government is going to play around with the tax structures? Is that what you're expecting, or is there something more you expect in the budget? Uh, I think uh, I mean it's, uh, it's it's the last uh, budget for the ruling government. Uh, uh, currently, for the current ruling government, so they, uh, uh, I, I mean, I think they, they would have something thrown in. I we hope they would have something thrown in for the customer. Uh, it has to be very pro, uh, uh, pro for the customer. Uh, but I think it's uh, anybody's guess. So it's like a wait and watch. Uh, we have nothing uh, really to. I would have nothing really to comment on that. But uh, the, I feel it would be a populist budget. 